The Sacramento Kings lose at home 121 to 110 to the Miami Heat. And the Miami Heat are now 32 and 25. And the Sacramento Kings are now 33 and 24. Very similar records there. The Heat are now in sixth place in the Eastern Conference. And the Sacramento Kings have fallen two places to seventh place behind the Suns and Pelicans, who are both 34 and 24. And right above the Mavericks, who have the same record as them, and three games above the Lakers in ninth place. Today is February 27th, 2024. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you're here for the whole video. Y'all back? We back. Y'all back? We definitely back. What's going on, YouTube? And what's going on with all my folks out there? And all you Kings fans? It's your guy, Jay Wood, a.k.a. Shy the Man, and I'm back at you with another episode of The King's Morning After, Midday Cup of Joe with Jay. Ooh, my cup of Joe's cold. I'm going to go reheat this real quick. Ah, oh, yeah. Steaming now. Man, cup of Joe was cold. It's like the Kings game last night. The defense was cold. And I don't mean cold in a good way. Defense was bad. And you know what day it is. It's Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Yeah, Taco Tuesday. I got the cheese. She tasting the Kool Aid. So, Taco Tuesday. Hopefully, you're gonna enjoy some tacos for the day. Celebrate a little bit of Mexican heritage, like the Miami Heat did with Jaime Jaquez, a uh, Mexican American who basically went off on the Kings and kicked our ass last night. So, you know, we'll tribute. We'll give tribute to Jaime Jaquez, Jaquez tonight. Today. For Taco Tuesday. Good on you, Jaime Hawkins. You are a rookie. You're looking pretty good out there, man. I saw you in the, uh, was that the dunk contest? I, or was that the rookie ch game or something? I saw him. He, he played really well in that as well. He's going to be a very good player. That's a very good hiccup for the Heat to add to their, uh, their experienced guys that they have. And the Kings looked like they were coming off a of back-to-back. They looked tired, uh, poor defense. They didn't close out quarters well. There was a nice attempted comeback at the end, but it was not enough. They should have been playing like that at the end of every quarter, or at least at the end of the half, and for most of the, th the third quarter as well. Great comeback in the end of the fourth quarter, but that needed to happen a lot sooner. Um, the, the, the output and the energy they put out to do that was good to see at the end of the game, but... If they would have had a little bit more of that, say, in the second quarter and in the third quarter, I think this game could have been different. The Heat just looked tougher. They looked like a better defensive team as well. Um, these guys have the same record, but it was a little disconcerting to see the Heat own the Kings a little bit at the end of the game um, at home uh, without three of their best players. And that's my cup of joe. One creamer, no sugar. Quick stats for you guys. The Miami Heat had six guys in double figures. Everybody was scoring on the Kings last night. They scored 121 points. Uh, let me show you guys this stuff real quick. Hold on. Kings scored 121. I mean, I'm sorry. The Heat scored 121. And the Kings only scored 110 at home. Uh, that's a little pathetic if you ask me. We're letting guys come in and score 121 on us, and we can't score more than 110 at home. Bam out of bio was out there. Um, Bam Adebayo had 28. The rookie, Jaime Jaquez, with 26. And then off the bench, Kevin Love, old man Kevin Love with 19. And Hayward Highsmith with 15. Caleb Martin was out there balling. Was, he contributed 16 points. DeLon Wright, an ex-king, with 13 points. Rebounds, Bam Adebayo had 
10 and their leading assist getter was Duncan Robinson. And the leading score for the Kings last night was Keegan Murray. Good job, Keegan. I like to see that type of scoring from you. That's great. He was out there being very aggressive as well. I like to see that. A uh, De'Aaron Fox with 27, second leading score. Uh, on the night, the last night, where Bam Adebayo was playing very tough, very, very tough defensively. The minus only have 14 points. Kevin Herter with 14. Glad he pitched in. Harrison Barnes with 10. Better than most nights for Harrison Barnes. We, I'd like to see more out of him. And off the bench, uh, Malik Monk, Trey Lyles, they didn't really have it off the bench last night. Davion Mitchell, Mitchell played limited minutes. Chris Duarte did not score anything. So we didn't have very much of a bench push. We didn't have a center come off the bench. I mean, I guess you can say Trey Lyles plays, can play center, but... He's not really a center. So we didn't have any real big men coming off the bench, which is kind of interesting to me. Demonis Sabonis did have a triple-double. And if you could call any of his triple-doubles empty, this one was just because the Kings just really couldn't get it going at the end of the game and just kind of looked sluggish, uh, especially defensively. It's pretty interesting, though. All the scores were in double figures, which is great. Demonis had 14 rebounds on the night, 10 assists. Team stats... Uh, both teams shot right around 51, 52%. They shot good from three-point percentage. Heat 36, Kings shot 40%. Free throws was pretty bad for the Kings. Story of the season, 58% from free throw. Other team stats were pretty much even. The Heat scored about 60 points in the paint. Kings scored about 50. The Kings, interesting enough, had about 20 fouls in this game. And the Heat had 12. The Heat got 25 free throws to the Kings 12. They had about half the amount of free throws in the Heat, which is an interesting stat, which tells me the Kings had to, were fouling a lot. They they couldn't uh, stay in front of guys. They chest to chest with guys and were uh, reaching a lot as well. Quarter by quarter, Kings uh, winning by one at, at the end of the first quarter. But by the second, by halftime, uh, the Heat were up. And the Heat kind of dominated the third, which has kind of been a problem for the Kings. And this is where the Kings really need to show up, especially when they're losing at halftime is third quarter. So this needs to be opposite. And the Kings made a comeback at in the fourth. But like I said, it just wasn't enough to defeat the Heat last night. I test. Yeah. I test. I test. I test. I'm going to give the Kings an eye test. So the Kings watching the game last night, um, there was guys that were able to start in place of other guys and off the bench that were able to come in and kind of dominate things a little bit. I mean, Kevin Love came off the bench and had 19 points. Old man Kevin Love, you know, Hightower had 15 points. Uh, Adam Bio really looked like he was dominating the matchup against Sabonis last night. Uh, Sabonis had nothing for him. Adam Bio is longer, more athletic, a little quicker, and he uh, was giving it to Sabonis last night. And he was Ding him up as well. So bonus, he he was a little under his normal output and just wasn't comfortable down low. And that's kind of hard to say, you know, against a guy that had 14 rebounds and also 10 assists. You know, he's kind of the point center. But it also is interesting to me that at no point do we use a bigger center or put any of the centers in. And it was interesting on the radio earlier, they were saying, um, I think it was Watkins and Styles. They were saying that Mike Brown was out coached by he coach. Eric Spolstra, who we all know is one of the longest standing coaches and uh, we know is an excellent coach and is a is a championship winning coach. And, you know, I, I tend to agree with it a little bit. Mike Brown was out coast a little bit um, in one part, in one way with the substitutions and also by uh, the use of plays in defense. Spolstra ran a zone on us, or just a good old college zone, which is pretty much daring us to shoot, you know, and packing the, the, the inside a little bit. You usually use a zone when you're playing against a not a great shooting team or you know you feel like the team is a little more athletic than you and you want to kind of double team and trap and do things like that and um our dog malik monk just couldn't really get it going couldn't get anything going offensively guys weren't able to close out story of the season not enough defense and not enough offense you can't just a little bit of lackadaisical play you can't let a team that's so shorthanded come in with more energy than you, even if you're on a back-to-back, -back, you're at home. You got you got to be ready for these type of things. 
I don't want the Kings to let the the season wear on them. You know, I don't want them to, to tire out again like they did. Seem like before the the All Star game, but you know, it, it's time for these guys to go ahead and pick it back up again. That's my eye test. Bottom line, the Kings morning after. Bottom line, today's bottom line is. My eye test always seems to lead right into my bottom line because bottom line for that game is that's a blueprint on how not to play, especially against uh, uh, on a back to back against the road team. The Kings by the should have been the the team running the the zone, trying out of the zone against this team uh, because the way they they look, they look more energetic and they look more athletic and they they came to the basket with more force. So it was something, some other things I felt the Kings could have tried and maybe even bringing in a big man at some point like Lynn or JaVel McGee. I'm not sure of JaVel McGee's status. He hasn't played in a while. So uh, hopefully he's not injured, but I'll check on that. Um, the Kings have Denver coming up. A win last night would have been good, especially going against this Denver team who's going to want some revenge after losing to us a couple times. You never want to get shut out against the team. So we know Denver is going to be playing really hard. Next up, that leads me into next up. I, like I said, we got Denver next. So Wednesday, February 28th, we have the Denver Nuggets at 6 p.m. in Denver. So be there or be square. And also subscribe so you can check out my review after that game. Three keys to beating uh, the Denver Nuggets. Um, really, what the Kings need to do is, you guys hear me say it all the time, blueprint the last two times they played the Denver Nuggets because they are on a two-game winning streak versus the Nuggets. With the victory recently on February February 14th, beating the Nuggets 102-98 to in Denver, which was a low-scoring game. So obviously the Kings were playing defense on that game or the Nuggets were not shooting well. Uh, just kind of looking back, the Nuggets did have a few guys scoring. Uh, Justin Holiday didn't score very big. Jokic had 15 in that game. Aaron Gordon had 25. And for the Kings, we had, that was the game where Harrison Barnes had 20. Obviously, Harrison Barnes, hey, if you could pick up your scoring, we do need that third guy to score. Uh, not a lot of scoring from the rest of the team, but it was, a, it was a blueprint for a victory versus the Nuggets. So the Kings must have been playing some good defense if they were able to hold Nikola Jokic to 15. Porter had 19. It appears they were missing their guy, though, Jamal Murray. I'm not sure the status for this game, but obviously that's another guy, the mid-range guy that the Kings need to hold back. Stay in front of Nikola Jokic. I think you're better off keeping him out the key. He he can shoot threes and all that, but you're better off keeping him out there shooting threes. Aaron Gordon plays with a lot of force and comes to the hole. If somebody can put a chest on him and keep him from driving to the hole too much, you have a chance. And then Michael Porter Jr. obviously get a hand in his face, close out good against him because he's a shooter as well betting lines so the game is tomorrow wednesday so there's not going to be betting lines out yet i usually do the betting lines same day so um after midnight i believe so if you're interested in doing some sports bets i don't have the king's betting line yet check out bet us that's where i bet bet us and i have a link down in the description Click that link. Any money that you deposit, they give you credits and extra money. So it's a good place to bet or start betting or learning how to bet. And they also have parlay bets. It's kind of fun. So use the link below for Bet US. Thank you. All right. I got a question for you. Make a comment. Answer my question in the comments below if you can. Are you worried about the Kings standing? Are you worried about their status with this loss with Denver coming up? Um, they dropped to seventh. Uh, you don't want them to drop much farther than that. I want them to be in the playoffs, not in the play in. So uh, this is another West Coast team that they're going to have to play well against or they're going to drop further in the standing. Uh, at this point, Golden State and L.A. are like three games under the Kings. But still, you lose a game, they win a game, and then, you know, you're two, one, two games away from them. So we don't want that to happen. We need to keep trying to get these victories against these Western Conference teams. So comment below. Let me know how you feel about their current status and standings. And please, also, if you're still watching, please like this channel or like this video, excuse me, and so please subscribe. I, I talk Kings. I talk NBA. We're going to do some other fun stuff and some live stuff. And we're going to also have some chat and some other fun stuff that we're going to do. So you're going to want to be here for that. If you like talking Kings, NBA in general, basketball in general, go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate it. It also helped the channel. I'm new, but we're growing. So please subscribe and also make a comment. Anything, comment about anything, comment about how I'm doing, comment about the Kings, comment about the weather. I don't care. 
make a comment that helps as well and share the content throw it on any of your social media be like hey check out this new commentator guy for the king he's pretty good or he's pretty bad share the content i appreciate you and i have a motivational quote for you today this quote um is from me and it comes from the good old streets of northern california where i was raised and it goes like this it's time to get your ass in gear pretty self-explanatory right one sentence and it basically means it's time to stop sitting around it's time to stop thinking pondering wondering doubting yourself it's time to go out and do it get up and do it get motivated get up go do it get your ass in gear and that's my motivational quote of the day for you and guys that's pretty much all that i have for you for today i want to say thank you for joining me thank you for watching this far and please come back the day after the next kings game subscribe so that you can watch another episode of the kings morning after midday cup of joe with jay Ooh, it's kind of warm right now it's actually perfect very strong so hopefully it'll, it'll, it's gonna wake me up hopefully the kings will wake up when they play denver and with that i'm out but before you leave check out these moves oh. it's good <laughs>